Steve English and Kiko Giles here in Estoril to guide you through the action from the opening race of the Moto2 European Championship. Yesterday, Lucas Tolovic was able to claim his second career pole position, but the German is going to be hunted in this race with Moto2 rookies Fermin Aldegier and Alonso Lopez having impressed in the qualifying session. Lopez comes into the Moto2 class having been relatively successful in the Moto3 World Championship, a podium finisher, front row starts, and he'll be expected to be a big contender all the way through this season. Kiko, what are we expecting in Moto2 this year? We are expecting a much closer battle at the front of the field. Lucas Tulovic, we know he goes well at Estoril, as we've said, but Fermin Aldegier and Alonso Lopez, both on those Bosco Scuros, they were previously speed ups. This is the first time, really, we've seen that bike that team with two riders challenging the front. On top of that, Adam Norridin, Tiger Harder, Kevin Kubo, Andy Vidoy, the rookie. And played Fermin Aldegier and Lucas Tolovic. We now wait for the start of 18 laps of Moto2 action. And the red lights are on. Tolovic on pole position. A little bit of a jump start potentially there from the 54 of Fermin Aldegier. We'll wait and see whether or not that got picked up or if he timed it just to perfection on the run down in towards turn one though. It's Hadid that's made a great start from the second row with the great Aldegier trying to force his way down there as well. And Aldegier maybe just losing out of spot there into third spot, but a great start from Hadid. Tiger Harder from fifth on the grid. He's up to first already. He's put a bit of time in between himself and Tulovic. Tulovic didn't get a bad start. He just didn't make the best start. He's in second though. Lots of spots on the camera lens at turn three. Please, everyone, keep it upright. Harder leads on the 23. The number three is Tulovic. Third place, Alonso Lopez, a rookie. Then fourth is Norrin. He's held position. And fifth place, if I'm looking correctly, is, I know, it's 54 in third. That's Aldegier. And the 21 of Lopez is in fifth place. Sixth is Bishakiski as Tulovic hits the front. Yeah, Tulovic on the number three machine runs in a little bit hot, able to get that bike stopped though. And Tulovic, our pole sitter, able to retake the race lead. We've seen those spots of rain out there. It's definitely going to be something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Even on our commentary box window, we don't have any spots of rain here yet. So only a few around this circuit right now. But that's a big challenge for the riders. You can see there for Had on the 23, able to take the lead from Tulovic. Already we've seen a few leads changes during this race. Is Tulovic going to try and answer back into the chicane? If there's spots of rain, you don't want to try and make that move into the chicane right now. You want to build yourself up through this race. Make sure you're able to get that bike and the tyres up to temperature and then start to push on. You can see there the 54 of Fermin Aldegier. He's done a good job to be able to hold on to that third spot, but it's going to be interesting to see whether or not he did jump the start because Kiko, it looked like he made a move a little bit earlier. He was definitely else. moving, Steve. He was definitely moving, but did he move to perfection? His teammates just got up to fourth, picked the pocket of Adam Norridin, who's out on the yeah. green. And you can see Tonovic there now just weaving in behind Hada. They're coming close as they move on to that start finish straight. Hada, though, this is as good as we've seen from him. And uh, the man that's qualified in the middle of the second row has done a good job in the opening lap. But look at Fermin Aldegier sliding wow. that 54 all the way into turn one. Does a really good job to get that bike stopped. But has Tiger Hada been able to get that bike down the inside? Good riding there from Hada. Not panicking out there, Kiko. Great stuff from Harder. Even better stuff from Aldegier, though. He lead, He was leading momentarily in his first race on the Moto2 bike. Third place, Alonso Lopez just got up to Tulovic's position there. Tulovic back down to fourth. It's all very, very close. I feel like the rain, there's them spots. He's playing mental rain is what it's called. They're, they're not pushing 100% at the moment in them breaking areas. They're just a little bit tentative, and that's holding the pack together. Aldegier. Aldegier. Trying to attack down in towards the hairpin as well. Good move from Aldegier to be able to do that. You can see Tolovic trying to make sure he's able to hold on to third spot. Alonso Lopez, mm -hmm. though, he comes from Moto3. He's not afraid of trying to carry corner speed all the way around the outside on the number 21 machine. And now he gives the inside line to Tolovic, and Lopez able to take that third spot. That is really really good riding from the Moto2 rookie. You can see there the flags are out and uh, that'll be potentially just to say that there's a few spots of rain out there as well. You can see for Lopez down the inside as well. We've got a Bascas Girl 1-2 with Fermin Aldegier leading the way in the number 54 and then the number 23 of Tiger Hanna. We've just got a notification as well that Aldegier didn't jump the start so he timed that to perfection on the 54 and the two Bascas Girl bikes have found their way to the front of the field. It's Aldegier versus Lopez. We said this yesterday, Steve, when we were looking on from trackside that the Bos Scuros looked good over race distance and we did say Tulovic has got to prove to us that he can hold in there on the race distance. At the moment, Aldegier's clearing up. We've got a black flag for number 20. 
that? Number 20 is Dimazaki Pratama yeah. on the Calix machine. So he's one of the Moto 2 riders. He's been given a black flag. You can see there down in towards turn one. It looked like Tunovic was able to make that move on Hada. Right now, though, it is Alonso Lopez that's been the man that's been making the moves. Last time around, Aldegier was faster overall, but in that final sector, we saw Lopez pull back quite a bit of time as well. Lopez on the 21, two Bosca Skuro bikes. Exactly. Tunovic, you know, he's cleared harder. Harder, we've seen this so many times. Starts very well, just starts to drop back. This is the battle for around six base. This is Dimas Eki Pratama. Now, he has got a black flag. He ain't taken much notice, though, as he goes to try and get through on his teammate, Peter Bishakirsky. The pole looks to fight back, but the Indonesian's got it. But, I mean, it's only for track position. Now, this is the team. This is Dimas Eki Pratama. That's flat on one of these Moto2 bikes, but turn six, a breaking area. And that mistake from Tulovic has just taken him out of contention a little bit. A bit wide there from Aldegier, a bit too wide, I think, uh, from the race leader. Lopez is there, didn't make any real big inroads, but with six laps to go, five and a half laps to go, you now get the feeling with that mistake from Tulovic, Oh, that's Tulevich. a big mistake. Big high side for Tulevich. He lost half a second in his mistake at the start of this race. He's lost 16 points with his mistake now. And you can see he's questioning what happened. Unfortunately for Tulevich, quite possibly, he was just trying to close up on those race leaders. This is the sector of the track where last time around he was actually very strong and able to get right up towards the Boscus Girl bikes. And just pushes that little bit too hard. Race our pole setter Tulevich. Yeah, we just come to that a little bit late. He, he's on the power very, very early. He's pushing on. He lost time at turn one he's lost the rear there and he's lost 16 points altogether as you say steve he's on his feet though 5.6 for style he's straight on his two class you want to try and open the gap if you're aldegier looks like he's stronger in the first sector but look at alonso lopez closing up at this point he's very good in the braking area alonso lopez one of his key areas is actually down into turn one and into turn three so very very good there this is adam norridan so this would be a malaysian on the podium it's been a long long time since we've seen that uh, but it's exactly what we need he needed we spoke about it steve he was aiming for the podium he started fourth on the grid best ever grid result for him, him. and now he's going to get his first podium in the class but this battle for first as it says on your screen it really is a battle for first there's nothing between them around a tenth and that is it yeah we've just seen that there has been a crash down in towards turn two as well that's guillermo moreno that's crashed out the mexican rider that could well still leave a yellow flag down in towards turn one so for the likes of alonso lopez make that move early that's what and he's, he's done, done across the line alonso lopez on the number 21 machine leads the way. Aldegir is not close enough to answer straight back into turn one. But now for Aldegir, this is where you need to collect yourself. This is where you need to try and make sure. At that point, it's purely for track position. Minotti's in the gravel. Oh, I, I, so unlucky for Minotti. He's coming into the championship for the first time, but it has been a bit of a weekend for forget, to forget. We've seen him run off so many times down at turn one as well. Well, we've been watching, Steve. But back at the front where it really counts, these two are going at it, Hammer and Tongs. It's Alonso Lopez versus at Fermin Aldegier. Will Aldegier be able to drive past by the line? No, but he could well get him down into turn one. Yeah, Aldegier on the outside on the 54. Not close enough to try and make a move there on Alonso Lopez, but just close enough to be able to try and make sure he's able to keep his teammate honest as well. You can see here that that is Adam Norridan up there in third spot. It's back marker in front of one of the stock 600 riders. This is the battle then for fourth position. You've got Kubo at the front of it and you've got Dimazeki at the back of this group as well on the number 20 machine. Tiger Hada in the middle of it and uh, these guys really are battling our cameraman. A little bit excited there. Yeah, the he's eyesighted. <laughs> as well and uh, you can see Kem Kubo though on the number 9 machine out in front of this. He's got about five seconds in front of him of clear track so he's just got to keep his head down, try and make sure he's able to come away here with a fourth position. He had a few top five finishes last year, missed the first rounds of the year, but was actually quite competitive all the way through the season as well. You can see here at the front of the field, oh. though, it is still Lopez oh. leading the way, runs in a little bit deep, but he's able to use that then just to square it off as well. Lopez, through this section of the track, is actually quite fast through the next couple of corners, and that's what's going to be a big advantage for him to make sure he's able to hold off Aldegier into the chicane. You get the feeling Aldegier, from this point onwards, is not going to be close enough to make a move because Lopez is just faster. Into turn six is probably the best opportunity he's got. He's close here. He's but a lot closer now. This close. is about trying to make sure you're able to make a good run through the last corner. Use the slipstream to try and attack into turn one on the final lap of the race. And right now for Alonso Lopez, he's trying to get that head down. He's trying to open the gap. But for Fermin Aldegier, he's doing a really good job to be able to stick with his teammate. They're about to start the final lap of the race. It's all about trying to make sure he's close enough to be aggressive into turn one. Is Alonso Lopez going to take a defensive line into turn one, though? And for Lopez, he's kept himself all the way to that right-hand side 
side of the track. He hasn't given his teammate an option to make the move. Now for Aldegier in the 54, it's all about turn six. The, the thing there is, yes, Aldegier was closer, but he didn't get him over the line, he didn't get him at all. That We know Alonso Lopez is very, very good on the exit of corners and down that front straight, and that's where it's so, so crucial now. We're on the last lap. This turn three is where Lopez has been a bit wide. Better that time. Turn four next. Crucial corner. You've got to get the run out of there through turn five. And Aldegier has looked good at turn six. It's whether or not he's going to be able to do it. Here we go for, now. For Aldegier, it's all about the exit from turn four. Try and get through this sweeping right-hander and be close enough to try and be aggressive down into six. He is close enough. Alonso Lopez is going to have to defend it, but he's got no chance as well. You can see the 54 of Aldegier able to make nose. that move. Lopez runs Why? in wide. That's the race one now as well. So Front Furman Aldegier just needs to make sure he's able to get through the second half of this lap. He's done a great job to make that move. Set it up really well through turn four. He really did, and we've seen it, though. The last four or five laps at turn six was the point where Aldegier could make that move. The front end on Alonso Lopez's bike went for a proper walk there off track. He was so lucky to keep it on. But Aldis, yeah, what about this for a story? The Stock 600 champion in his first Moto2 race, barring mistakes in the last two or three corners, is going to take a victory. Yeah, Aldegier in the mid sector of this lap set the fastest time wow. overall. He made sure that he was in a position to attack his teammate Alonso Lopez. He made sure he was in a position to force a mistake as well once he made that move. Firm Aldegier on the Bosca Scuro bike steps up from the Stock 600 class from last season to win on his Moto2 European Championship debut. Stunning success. A 1-2 for the Bosca Scuro team. Alonso Lopez, he's back in Moto2 action after being in the Moto3 World Championship. Does really well on his debut. Adam Norridan able to pick up that podium. Kem Kuba able to come away with a top five finish. Keep it. That's not a bad start to the Moto2 European Championship. What about that? I mean, the, the unbelievable. Fermin Aldegier, 16 years old, straight up from the Stock 600 class as champion, straight into victory. Seamless. Unbelievable. We have got a proper talent on our hands here, Steve. And we're really to celebrate. Oh, race two. That Earlier on this morning, and uh, he's the latest rider that's made an impact in some of the other classes here in the CEV paddock from the European Talent Cup. But to pick up your from what he was able to do as well, this is Alex Eschrig, who uh, won the Stock 600 class. He comes into Park Ferme as well. At the end of the race, he was running about four seconds clear of Santa Cruz, who was in second position in the Stock 600 class. Kevin Orr just able to come away in third in the Stock 600 class. Now already missed out on overall points as well. The German rider only a second off Ishizuka in that final points paying position. This is Adam Norden, his first career podium in the European Championship. And for the man that's got plenty of Grand Prix experience, well over 50 World Championship starts, this is a real key moment as well. Obviously able to capitalize on the crash for his teammate, but he was there or thereabouts all the way through. And if you think back to last season's form for Norden, this is very different as well. He had a top five finish in Portimao, but overall he was mostly a top 10 runner rather than a podium contender. He needs to make sure he's able to build on that all. I mean, we all know that guy is good, but we didn't expect that. Fermin Aldegar then with a first victory in Moto2. Alonso Lopez, his teammate second, a Bosco Scuro 1-2. Who would have thought that? Adam Norodin, first podium for him. Kenneth Kubo matching his best position previous or fourth. And Peter Bishakirsky, really, really impressive stuff there in fifth. Tiger Harder, Dimas Eki Patama, Sam Wilford and Xavi Cardalus there ran out the top nine. Andy Bedoya, top ten on his debut. Matia Ratto there in 11 with Alex Toledo, the runner-up from stock 600 in 12th. Alex Escreek, top 600 this year in 13th. Sander Kroos there in 14th. And Takeshi Ishizuka, the last point scorer overall. Joining us, a fantastic Moto2 race here in the CEV FIM Repsol Championship. Adam Norodin, a first podium for the Malaysian there in third. Second place. And unfortunate for Alonso Lopez, but a strong debut known for him. And then on top of the podium, it is that man, the race winner, Fermin Aldeguer. Who would have thought that coming in? What a talent he is at just 16 years old. He has got a very bright future ahead of him. Second place there, trophy going to his teammate Alonso Lopez. And then it will go to Fermin Aldeguer. Unbelievable from the 16-year-old Spaniard. And, uh, well, Steve, it's going to be a fantastic year. That's just the start. That is for certain. Yeah, you can't wait for race two in just a few hours' time. But let's hear our national anthem for our race winner, Fermin Aldegier.
big positives. Lukas Tulovic as well this afternoon. He's got a lot of recovering to do, but his pace is there. I think Tulovic has landed now, but great stuff from his teammate Noradin. Fantastic start to his season. We've seen this from Noradin in the World Championship. He has got the pace, and it's just for him about unlocking it. Uh, the Bosco Scuro boys, they're celebrating. I think we, well, boys, definitely one of them. The 16-year-old winner there, Aldegar. I'm